this is my screen time right now. Approximately 8 hours. This is including the time I spend on social media, talking to my friends, taking online classes, basically everything that involves some sort of digital technology. Eight hours. That's one third of my day right there. Imagining a life without digital technologies seems impossible at this point. However, there are people in the world who have no screen time. And that's because they have no screen itself. The COVID-19 pandemic has caused many of us to change the way we used to live our lives. Kids in Ethiopia were forced to learn via radio. So essentially, the lessons will be broadcasted on a radio. Imagine how inconvenient that was. Eating food. That's something we do on an everyday basis, right? Well, during the pandemic, many of us have chosen to order food at home rather than going outside and, you know, increasing our chance of getting COVID-19. Well, many people didn't have this choice. That's because they didn't know how to use these digital technologies. And that's the reason we saw long queues at Hawker Centers. The COVID-19 pandemic has unveiled some staggering statistics. When I was researching for this issue, I saw a few reports which shocked me as well. 3 billion 700 million. That's the number of people in the world who don't have access to internet. That's half of the world's population. So while one half of the world is at the absolute cutting edge of technology, talking about how quantum computers have the power to like break encryption algorithms, the other half of the world doesn't even have basic internet access. We all live in Singapore, and we see tech conferences happening every second day. We constantly assume that everyone over here knows how to use digital technology. We know how to get benefits out of them. Well, sadly, one in nine people in Singapore don't know this. They're digitally illiterate. And this sums up to 580,000 people in Singapore who are digitally illiterate. Unknowingly, there is a distance forming in our society based on one's views, access, and knowledge to these technologies. So there is a social distance being created by digital technology. And that is exactly what a digital divide is. So I'll just rewind a bit. Social distance created by digital technology. Social over here connotates the population. And within the population, the many rules, sectors, or like predefined things. It could be based on one's financial status, gender or simply where one is born in. And since there's so many sectors out there, there's bound to be distances getting formed. Therefore, we can rephrase the definition of the digital divide to be the social distance created by digital technology. Now, one reason can be underpinned as the main cause of the digital divide, as the various causes that go into it. Well, for today, I've divided all these causes into four broad umbrella terms. The first cause, the social cause. Everyone in the audience has seen their grandparents struggling to download an app on their phone or simply just struggling to add someone to a WhatsApp group. Well, all of us being such amazing grandchildren we are, we decide to help them. We tell them how they can do whatever they want to do via digital technology. Well, not all senior citizens are this lucky, and therefore they become a part of this digital divide. The second cause, approach. All of us are really scared what will happen if the internet's not there anymore. Many people are scared of the internet itself. This sounds quite awkward at first thought, but it's a growing concern in the society. Many people fear the technology. They believe it causes them more harm rather than benefiting them. 
So while these people may have access to digital technologies, they just choose not to use it because they fear change. Having access, important keyword right there. And that brings us to our third point, the economic cost. So having access to a digital technology is directly related to one's economic status. So basically, one's financial status. If a person just simply can't buy a digital technology, how do you expect them to become digitally illiterate? Not possible. So people who live in poverty or probably are living in developing countries, they don't have the infrastructure, therefore becoming a part of the digital divide. And now, our very last cause, the geographical cause. It's quite self-explanatory. This divide is mainly focuses on how, where one person lives in and how that actually affects where they stand in the digital divide. A person living in an isolated rural area versus a person living in an urban area. Obviously, a person who's living in a rural area won't really have access to digital technology. There might not be an infrastructure to support it. A person living in an urban area is at the center of where all these technologies are coming from and therefore more likely to be digitally literate. The COVID-19 pandemic has unveiled this divide and has sparked concerns of organizations, governments across the globe. After all, 46% of the world still doesn't have broadband connection. And broadband connection is the absolute fundament of digital technologies. Therefore, international organizations and governments are trying to fix this problem so it doesn't become more serious. Remember the picture we saw at the very start of a child using a radio to get some education? This was an initiative taken by UNICEF and few other collaborators like the U.S. Agency for International Development. All they did was they provided 32,000 radio sets nationwide. So the students didn't have to pause the education simply because they didn't have laptops. And this is a really small step. All they did was give videos, but it helped up to 160,000 children. I'm pretty sure at the start, I showed some really large numbers, right? And all of you would have been, oh God, this is too large. Nothing can be done to solve it. But right there, they just provided radio sets. They helped 160,000 children. So all these things I'm talking to you right now about higher authorities helping us, it's not like we can do any of this proactively. We don't have the money. We don't have the resources to do it. So maybe, you know, we should sit back, relax, let the higher authorities do their work. Well, we enjoy the cost of the upcoming technology. It's that easy. Sadly, what I told is partially a lie. We can't enjoy the cost of upcoming technology. It's simply not possible. We just can't. Because for a society to progress, it's important that everyone's on the same level. Everyone's on a level playing field. So, if you want to enjoy the first of the upcoming technology, what can we do right now to solve it? Number four causes of digital divide we talked about. Only two causes are being getting solutions, which are basically the economic cause and the geographical cause that the higher authorities are doing. That still leaves us with two other causes, which is the social cause and the approach cause. So maybe if we find solutions for two causes, we will be able to make an impact. We will be able to close this digital gap. So all we need to do is to fix this digital divide is we need three things. Number one, we need a phone. Everyone over here has their phone with them. Number two, we need skills to operate a phone. So, you know, simple apps. And thirdly, but most importantly, we need a voice. We need a voice to communicate. We need a voice to share your digital literacy with others. These three things that I told you are actually the ingredients for digital empathy. Digital empathy. Funny word, right? Well, it's quite simple. 
is just showing care and understanding why digital mean. So let me explain you this a bit better. So story time. I used to go for a run every day during the pandemic. And I would see this one uncle going to the hawker center each and every day just to pack his food and take it home. So one day I just stopped by and I asked him, like, can I download an app on your phone so you can order food at home rather than gambling with your health and increasing your chance of getting the COVID-19? Well, I downloaded an app, taught him how to use it. That way, I didn't see the uncle again. But that's a good sign. That means he was using his digital literacy that I taught him to actually order food at home. So in a sense, I contributed a little to bridge the digital gap. And I did this about five times. So trust me, it's not that hard. All of us here, if you employ digital empathy, we will be able to fix this digital divide. No, I'm not blabbering something over there. It's really possible. Let's do a quick calculation. Right now, there are approximately 580,000 digitally illiterate people in Singapore. And according to the Ministry of Education, there are 214,000 secondary school students. Dividing both of these numbers, we get an approximate answer of three. And three is actually the number of people and all the secondary students needs to educate to bridge this digital gap. So essentially, if each one of you educate just three people by showing digital empathy, we can bridge the digital gap. It's not that hard. So if we all play our part on an individual scale, we will be able to make a national impact. Right now, the people who know how to use digital technologies, like all of us here, we are in upper hand because we get the benefits of these. Well, in order to progress, everyone needs to be on a level playing field. To so help the people who are digitally illiterate become digitally literate by just employing some digital entity. Play your part today by just helping three people become digitally literate. Thank you.